All right, so as far as the best, best practice goes, <clears throat> um, first to minimize any kind of overhead, because as we've already talked about, the reports can be long running, and in worst case, they can run out of RAM or have some kind of crash. So we, we want to be very, very, um, what's the word on? Conscious of only pulling over the required data that we need. Uh, a lot of reports that have gotten converted from 2009 on up carry a lot of extra uh, baggage. Um, and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't have a good reason. Uh, but it has, so that's one place that you can start if you start having problems with reports is to try and figure out which columns or, or values don't need to come across in the data set. Um, Again, consider using Excel to make sure that you're only getting what you need. No extra details. Um, the more that you can filter within CAL, the better the report's going to run. If you're going to try and do all your filtering within RDLC, that means you're carrying a lot more data than you need to. And now you're asking the report engine to do a lot more than it should have to. So if you can do the filtering first before you get to the data set, that's the time to do it. Um, let's see, remove columns that never end up. Okay, that's just the extra baggage I was talking about. Um, another thing to consider is, again, with this being a flat data set, if I include a picture, and as this says, clear out blob images, which is where the pictures are, if I don't clear out a blob image after the first time it comes over, it's going to come over with every row. So if I do like a customer logo, and it comes over in the first row, and I don't clear it after that, and it's going to show up every time. So my row set is going to get significantly bigger as I try and accommodate the company logo every, every time. Let's see, uh, do not repeat columns as in section designer unless the different decimal format. That, I think that's more related to uh, we do carry over the format strings, so there's no sense repeating it over and over and over and again in a section unless you have multiple format strings you need to keep up with. So it's just another place. So between captions and comments and making sure that you don't carry the extra stuff like the images and whatnot, getting rid of extra format strings that you don't need. Um, all those kind of things will help reduce the size of the data set and make your report run better. Let's see. Uh, we talked about this report, the inventory valuation report. This top one is what we ended up doing to make it run much faster and much, uh, well, to completion. <laughs> um, we did all the calculations for that within CAL created a temporary table. We created a data item that basically spun through all the different entries, summed it all up, and at the end, sent just the summations. So instead of having two or three million records, we ended up with 20 or 30. So it makes for a much better reporting uh, scenario. And again, here's the kind of the story behind it. 50 gig database with 200 items with variants and locations and whatnot had about six million item ledger entry rows, um, which basically led to out of memory on a 32-bit client. By changing it and doing the summation within NAV, uh, we were able to, to finish the report uh, within a much smaller window of time, as well as actually completing the report. All right, um, some of the other things, avoid hard coding, um, specifically like uh, captions. We have a facility where you can put a caption in. The caption is passed as a parameter to the data set, so it's only passed once, and then you can access the captions over there, and that will bring um, the appropriate multi-language, if you set it up with multiple languages, it'll bring those captions over, rather than having to send it through the data set. Now, there's sometimes that 
you're going to need to send stuff through the data set, and that's fine. Um, you know, a label doesn't necessarily fit the fit what you need for it. Um, you know, if you have uh, one of the gentlemen asked me something about changing customers and changing titles and, and different descriptions and stuff, and in that case, yes, you're going to have to have the product make the decision and ch carry that through the data set to populate the right values. But where you can get away with having, you know, uh, like a sales order, you know, where it's printed in the customer's language, if you set up the ML up or the, the caption ML values as a label, then we'll choose the right label as it comes across. And as I said, it only gets passed once, it doesn't get passed through the data set. So it'll make for, it, it will help reduce the size of that data set. Um, unfortunately, uh, the captions need to be evaluated for each report. So um, you can kind of copy those from the tables where they have the definitions generally already built in and put them in the reports for the, for the tables and fields that you need. Um, but there's no way to reference back to the table effectively and still carry it, away, carry it over the way we needed to. Uh, let's see. One other option is um, if you can't use the text constant, is to consider uh, changing the fields using the field caption, which basically is something that uh, the programming language, the CAL, will allow you to do. So you can create the, the variables that you want to pass over as a column and then populate the value with this field caption, which will pick up whatever language is on that field. So like in, in um, the U.S., um, zip code is called postal code within the table definition. But if you want zip code to go across, if you use the field caption, it'll pick up zip code. It won't pick up the table name or the, the field name, which would be um, postal code. So that's what that's kind of talking about. In those cases where you need to, to pick up the language of a field to render on the report.